about the title of that song, Kirk? Joy to the world. Here's the key word for me, to. It's not joy from the world, it's joy to the world. We have the responsibility to deliver this message and the joy that comes from humble beginnings. That is unique. That is, there is no other message in the world that, that shares with the message of Christ, this notion that we live by dying. We, we find uh, joy through, oftentimes through suffering. Jesus was born in such humble circumstances. And because of that, we must deliver joy to the world. You've got this amazing program that you direct, that you produce called The Chosen. How has creating and producing The Chosen enhanced or changed your perspective on Christmas? Well, what's really interesting is The Chosen was actually birthed in Christmas. Uh, the, the, the show The Chosen was based on, or at least born from this short film about the birth of Christ that I did from the perspective of the shepherds for my church's Christmas Eve service back in 2017. I had, was coming off of a career failure. My movie had bombed at the box office. I didn't even know if I was ever gonna get a chance to do another movie or TV show and had gotten to a place where I was genuinely okay with that, which was the first time in my life that I was spiritually uh, content with whatever God had for me as opposed to wanting him to just bless whatever I wanted to do. And out of that came this uh, project, this little short film that I did. And again, it was only attended, intended for my church's Christmas Eve service. We filmed it on my friend's farm in Illinois, 20 minutes from my house. And in those 18 minutes where we were exploring the birth of Christ, but looking at the historical context, the cultural context, the human context, the fact of, okay, knowing what we know about shepherds back in those days, knowing what we know about the Roman occupation, knowing what we know about the longing for the Messiah that these people would have had, and that the religious leaders were the ones who actually received the lambs from the shepherds for sacrifice. That whole power dynamic, what must that have looked like? Exploring that, even just in the few minutes that we did, opened up so much for me. And that out of that is what came The Chosen. Because I thought, man, if in only 18 minutes I can see the birth of Christ, even though I've heard about it hundreds of times, but from a new perspective and have a fresh love for it, Wow, we, imagine what we could do if we could take even more time with the story of Jesus' entire ministry. So for me, not only have I learned more about the birth of Christ, but I've just learned more about Jesus by having the responsibility of telling the stories and expanding on the backstories of Jesus and these other people and the cultural context and historical context. And I am falling in love with Jesus and with this story more than ever. And uh, we'll get it, we can get into this at any time, but the, that's what Christmas with the Chosen comes from is now that I know Jesus even more, the birth of Jesus is even more extraordinary because you go knowing where he, where he went, knowing what he did, but that it all started with him as this helpless baby. I, 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 I genuinely, as, at 46 years old, am more excited about it than I've ever been. I, I, I'm blown away by the story myself. Uh, and the more that you dive into it, the more insights that you get, and you're helping us give, you're helping us to get more insights through The Chosen and through Christmas with The Chosen. It, it's awesome. I'm, I'm kind of blown away by these statistics here. The, uh, the Chosen's been viewed uh, over 374 million times in more than 190 countries on all seven continents. Uh, Dallas, do you think that, that this is indicating that people are having an increased hunger to know who God is? Yeah, and what's interesting is the explosion of the chosen started, or at least accelerated around the time of the pandemic. And a lot of people have said, do you think the pandemic has something to do with that? That people, uh, or maybe they were more scared or they were more insulated, I don't know. But when you look at the last 10 years, there is no question that we are, uh, at, at, at a high point of angst and division. And I mean, we, we, you, you can't turn on the television without hearing about that mm. constantly. And so I think there's two things that have made The Chosen more relevant than ever that maybe wouldn't have made it quite as impactful or successful as it is now 10 years ago. One is the fact that the realization that Jesus came at a very similar time 
When Jesus came 2,000 years ago, there was heightened division. There was heightened angst. There was oppression. There were people competing with each other for victimhood. There were people uh, constantly complaining about uh, how difficult things were from the top to the bottom. And Jesus comes along and his message is, uh, yeah, I'm actually not here to uh, rewrite a, an earthly kingdom. I'm here to actually bring about a heavenly kingdom, and I'm here to, to establish a kingdom in your hearts. And I'm not here to fight this war. I'm here to fight uh, a battle for your heart. And, and that, that piece of it, uh, the fact that the, that the time 2,000 years ago was actually similar to what we're going through now, has, has, I think, increased the resonance for people when they watch it. But then as part of that, the message uh, that, that Christ br brought um, is, and I'm sure you would agree with this, more relevant today than it was six months ago, than it was a year ago. I mean, the, the message of Christ is relevant forever, but I think our reception to it is more uh, heightened right now than ever. And, and I think the, the, the proof of that is in how people are responding to the show. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and I, I see history really as God's story. History is his story and the story's continued. It didn't end at the book of Revelation. Uh, it, it didn't end uh, 2,000 years ago, right? It's continuing on. And so, of course, the message of Christmas and the gospel is relevant and even maybe more relevant today because I think we're, we're, we're reaching uh, crescendos in, in the big gospel story song. So th this, is, this is so exciting to be experiencing Christmas in 2021. Let me ask you this question. Um, what do you think is the central message that God wants us to understand about him through the Christmas story? Well, that's a great question. Um, we explore it a bit in, in Christmas with the Chosen and in the, the brand new episode we did that exists within that. As you know, there's a bunch of music and artists performing, and, but in that is a, is a new episode of the Chosen. And um, I, I think that when you get to the end of the Christmas special, which is where we're wrapping up our episode and then we launch into this big musical finale, there's two things right next to each other that I think say everything about the birth of Christ. And, uh, and I think it speaks to the phrase that is very key in our Christmas special, which is, people must know. And so we think about that. What is it that people must know? Uh, because the, the title of the Christmas special, The Messengers, refers to the angels who delivered the message to the shepherds, uh, the shepherds who delivered the message to Mary and Joseph. Um, and now the, the Christmas special ends with us realizing we're the messengers now. Well, what is it that people must know? And I think it can be summed up in these two moments. One is when, when Joseph and Mary are getting ready for the birth of Jesus, there's this shot in, in our episode where Joseph scoops a pile of manure out of the way to make room for Mary to have a place to, to deliver the birth of the savior of the world, the creator of the universe. That image, when you take that along with a finale like Joy to the World led by Phil Wickham and Maverick City Music and, and the Torwaltz and the Bonner family and children's choir, all this, and, and it's done in this big epic way. It's my, one of my favorite moments of the whole special. Those two things right next to each other, I think mm -hmm. that is what Jesus wants us to tell people and want what he wants us to know. He came in such humble beginnings. And that, that, that song, think about the title of that song, Kirk, Joy to the World. Here's the key word for me, to. It's not joy from the world, it's joy to the world. We have the responsibility to deliver this message and the joy that comes from humble beginnings that is unique. That is, there is no other message in the world that, that shares with the message of Christ, this notion that we live by dying. We, we find uh, joy through, oftentimes through suffering. Jesus was born in such humble circumstances. And because of that, we must deliver joy to the world. That is our responsibility, to deliver to the world, not from the world. And I think that's, that's the biggest message that I take from it and that I hope to give, give uh, with this special. For the viewer who's watching right now, would you be willing to just look into the camera and maybe just explain in simple terms what the message of Christmas is, what Christmas is really all about for the religious person? Now, I'm not talking about sharing it for the, 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 the kid who was like me, who never really understood the message of the cross, but someone who's heard it their whole life like you did and maybe is just almost gagging on the religiosity of everything that they've heard. Could you just explain it to them in a way that is actually personal and cut through all of that religious jargon? Absolutely. Um, we can't ever let this become routine. We can't ever let this become something that we just experience because it happens to be December. Uh, 
In fact, Jesus probably didn't come during the month of December. We don't know exactly when he came, but the fact that Jesus, the Savior of the universe, came to earth and was born in a traditional manner for, with, a, with, with, with a mom in a barn that, um, and that his cries, his baby, his, his baby cry pierced 400 years of silence, of prophetic silence between the Old and the New Testament and announced that Emmanuel, God was with us, is an extraordinary truth that isn't just a Christmas truth. It is a year-round truth. And my hope and prayer for you is the same as what feels like it's happening to me, is that Christmas is not just a Christmas thing. Christmas is a Jesus thing that happens year-round. And I hope we never, and I hope you never, forget the importance of the fact that just like you, our Creator dwelt among us and was one of us for a time. And the opportunity for, for Christmas is to, in many ways, reignite your passion for the fact that you can have a relationship, an active daily relationship with someone who knows what you're going through because he went through it as well. And we hear that often, but I, what I hope is that when we get to the month of January, we don't forget it. That when we get to the month of January and February, that it's just as resonant as it is in the month of December.